New York Mets first baseman Pete Alonso celebrates in the dugout after hitting a three-run homer in the ninth inning against the Miami Marlins at Marlins Park. Steve Mitchell, USA Today Sports When it comes to barrel per batted ball percentage, which measures exit velocity and launch angle, the Yankees lead the majors, while the Mets are second. The full leaderboard is below, 2019 team barrel per batted ball percent. A barrel HTTPS colon slash slash t dot co slash b3 prextatum c is the perfect combo of exit velo, launch angle. Best thing you can do, hey there, big apple. Not. Great, mile high. Pick that twitter.com slash OP Miamishes, Mike Petriello, at Mike underscore Petriello, April 11th, 2019 for the Mets, Pete Alonso, whose exit velocity has averaged a ridiculous 94.8 mph, has a 37% barrel rate. Combine those two things and you get someone who has five homers and six doubles in his first 11 big league games. JD. Davis, whose barrel rate is 20.8%, has Alonso beat an exit velocity, averaging 95.1 mph. For the Yankees, Aaron Judge has Alonso and Davis both beat with an average exit velocity of 97.8 though his barrel percentage is only 19.2. Gary Sanchez, who has clubbed six homers this season, has an average exit velocity of 94.1 and a tremendous barrel percentage of 31.3. Winter is here. With Game of Thrones set to return Sunday for its eighth and final season, New York athletes gave their predictions and talked about theories for how the saga will end. Click below. When will Jed Lowry return? Zero hours, zero minutes and 39 seconds on the Shea Anything podcast, Doug Williams and Andy Martino discussed the status of the injured Jed Lowry and when he might return. The Mets have been without Jed Lowry all season as he deals with a knee injury. Mickey Calloway gave a promising update earlier this week, and SNY's Andy Martino provided the latest on Lowry during Wednesday's Shea Anything podcast, The Amazing Life, from Way to NJ. Zero hours, two minutes and zero seconds on the season premiere of The Amazing Life presented by Coca-Cola, Todd Frazier tries to give teammate Brendan Nimmo some New Jersey style. On the season premiere of The Amazing Life presented by Coca-Cola, Todd Frazier tries to give teammate Brendan Nimmo some New Jersey style. April 10, 2019, New York City, New York, USA, New York Mets shortstop M. Rosario, 1, and New York Mets right fielder Michael Conforto, 30, celebrate after defeating the Minnesota Twins at City Field. Mandatory credit, Noah K. Murray USA Today Sports, Noah K. Murray, the Mets, 7-4, tied for first place in the NL East, face the Braves in Atlanta on Thursday night at 7.20 p.m. On SNY, here's what went down on Wednesday, in case you missed it. In the Mets win over the Twins, they achieved something that hadn't been done in the majors since 1994 greater than greater than Reed Moore Syndergaard, Mets beat Twins 0 hours 1 minute and 4 seconds New York Mets pitcher Noah Syndergaard stifled the Twins with his arsenal and says this is the best he's felt mechanically in a long time, this is the Noah Syndergaard Mets fans are used to seeing, from the start of Syndergaard's night on the city field mound against the Twins, you could feel this was one where Thor could go deep. His fastball was ramped up to 98 to 99 miles per hour early, and he even topped 100 miles per hour in the 1, 2, 3 first inning. After a quick blip in the third, where he allowed one run to cross the plate, Syndergaard cruised, mechanically, I felt probably the best I've felt in a long time, Syndergaard told reporters after his 7 inning, 7 strikeout night. So just trying to work on continuing to make that consistent. I guess when my mechanics are spot on, I get a little more movement on my ball. Mets top twins at City 0 hours 0 minutes and 45 seconds. New York Mets were dealt six consecutive walks in an inning and took advantage to break this game open against the Twins. The Twins basically handed the Mets this one, as a walk-happy Minnesota pitching staff led New York to a 9-6 win at City Field on Wednesday night. Greater than greater than box score six things to know about Wednesday's game. 1. Noah Syndergaard had a decent outing for the Mets in this one. He allowed four runs on five hits over seven innings of work with seven strikeouts and no walks. 
Most of Syndergaard's runs allowed came in the eighth, as Mickey Callaway sent him back out for the inning. He allowed an RBI double and then an RBI triple which forced him out of the game. Despite those mistakes, his fastball was working around 98-99 to all night long with top outs at 100, Wilson Ramos 2 run single 0 hours 0 minutes and 15 seconds New York Mets catcher Wilson Ramos hits a 2 run single with the bases loaded against the Minnesota Twins. The Mets had a very unconventional bottom of the fifth inning, but Wilson Ramos managed to play two with a bases loaded, two RBI single to break the game open. April 4, 2019, New York City, New York, USA, New York Mets starting pitcher Noah Syndergaard, 34, pitches against the Washington Nationals during the second inning at City Field. Mandatory credit, Brad Penner USA Today Sports Brad Penner, Noah Syndergaard returns to the mound as the Mets finish up a two-game set against the Twins at City Field on Wednesday at 7.10 p.m. On SNY, Mets notes with their loss on Tuesday, the Mets have lost consecutive games for the first time this season. They have 15 homers over their first 10 games, the third highest total in franchise history over their first 10 games, Wilson Ramos is back behind the plate. Pete Alonso looks to continue his tour at start. He's the first player in modern MLB history with 11 extra base hits over his first 10 career Major League games. Click here to follow via SNY Game Day July 31, 2018, Washington, D.C., USA, New York Mets relief pitcher Jacob Rame, 35 pitches during the first inning against the Washington Nationals at Nationals Park. Mandatory credit, Tommy Gilligan USA Today Sports Tommy Gilligan as the Mets traveled north from Port St. Lucie, their bullpen looked to be a solid unit. New GM Brody Van Wagenen landed the MLB's saves leader and closer Edwin Diaz and brought back Juris Familia to join Robert Kesselman and Seth Lugo. Lefty Justin Wilson was also a crucial free agent pickup. But this group has not gotten off to the start they hoped for in 2019. As a whole, though, the seven bullpen arms, that includes Luis Avilon and Tim Peterson as well, own a combined 5.76 era to start the new year. Avilon has the worst era of the relievers, sitting at 16.20 after allowing six runs in 3.1 innings. Lugo is also struggling with a 8.10 era after allowing six earned over 6.2 innings. Doug Williams and Andy Martino go in-depth about the catching scenarios for the team, and how it's a lot more complicated than it may seem. They also discuss Dallas Keuchel and the starting rotation, plus the depth on the team and what happens when Frazier returns. Click below to listen October 16, 2018, Houston, Texas, USA, Houston Astros starting pitcher Dallas Keuchel, 60, delivers a pitch in the first inning against the Boston Red Sox in Game 3 of the 2018 ALCS Playoff Baseball Series at Minute Maid Park. Mandatory credit, Troy Tormina USA Today Sports, Troy Tormina. The Mets have continued to be in contact with free agent starting pitcher Dallas Keuchel, according to SNY's Andy Martino. The Athletics' Ken Rosenthal recently reported that, while Keuchel would prefer a multi-year deal, he is open to signing a one-year contract worth more than the $17.9 million qualifying offer he rejected. Brody Van Wagenen did a terrific job this past winter working to improve the team's position, player depth, but he has yet to create reliable, proven insurance for the pitching staff, specifically the rotation. In Keuchel, Van Wagenen has the opportunity to add depth, reliability and experience to his rotation, but it also comes with a variety of cons as well. Brody Van Wagenen, Matthew Zaroni, Metsblog.com, three days after he walked five batters in just 1.2 innings against the Nationals at City Field, RH reliever Tim Peterson has been optioned by the Mets to AAA Syracuse. Peterson, who had turned in three scoreless appearances before Sunday's disaster, had a 4.50 era and 2.50 whip in 4.0 innings. To replace Peterson, the Mets called up RHP Corey Oswalt, who has made one start this season for AAA, allowing three runs on four hits while walking one and striking out five in 5.2 innings.
April 3, 2017, New York City, New York, USA, general view of fans outside City Field before a game between the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves. Mandatory credit, Brad Penner USA Today Sports Brad Penner. In the latest Forbes valuations of MLB teams, the Mets are valued at $2.3 billion, the sixth most valuable franchise in the league. That is a 10% increase from last year's valuation by Forbes, which pegged the Mets at being worth $2.1 billion. The Mets are one of seven MLB teams worth at least $2 billion, according to Forbes. They edge out the number 7 Cardinals by $200 million. Van Wagenen gives Mets updates 0 hours 1 minute and 51 seconds. Brody Van Wagenen stopped by the SNY booth during last night's Mets game. Watch some of the highlights including how he met Jacob Degrom. Brody Van Wagenen stopped by the SNY booth during Tuesday night's Mets game. Watch some of the highlights including how he met Jacob Degrom. April 9, 2019, New York City, New York, USA, New York Mets first baseman Pete Alonso, 20, watches the flight of his solo home run against the Minnesota Twins during the seventh inning at City Field. Mandatory credit, Brad Penner USA Today Sports Brad Penner, Mets rookie Pete Alonso has been on fire during the first 10 games of his big league career. And now he's at the point where he's making history. Alonso, who crushed two more homers on Tuesday night to bring his season total to five, became the first player in modern MLB history, since 1900, to have at least 11 extra base hits in his first 10 career games, per the Alliance Sports Bureau. No other player has ever had more than nine extra base hits in his first 10 games. The 24-year-old Alonso is hitting .385.429.923 with 5 homers, 6 doubles, 14 RBI, and 8 runs scored in 10 games, 42 plate appearances. Mets walloped by Twins 0 hours 0 minutes and 56 seconds New York Mets pitcher Jacob Degram knows he didn't have his best stuff against the Twins, takes blame and ready to move on to his next start. It has been a while since Jacob Degram had an outing like he did Tuesday night at City Field. The Mets ace struggled against the Twins, allowing six runs in four innings on eight hits and a walk in a 14-8 loss, snapping a 26-game quality start streak, one shy of breaking the record set by Hall of Fame Bob Gibson in the 1967-68 seasons, yet it was letting his team down that was eating away at Degram after the game. April 2, 2019, Miami, Florida, USA, New York Mets starting pitcher Jason Vargas, right, talks with catcher Wilson Ramos, left, near the pitcher's mound in the fifth inning against the Miami Marlins at Marlins Park. Mandatory credit, Steve Mitchell USA Today Sports, Steve Mitchell, every time Jason Vargas steps on a mound, Dallas Keuchel becomes more appealing to the Mets. How could that not be the case, even when Vargas is only pitching for an inning, as he did in the ninth of Tuesday's 14-8 loss to Minnesota, his inability to fool hitters is evident. Alonso homers twice versus Twins 0 hours 0 minutes and 37 seconds New York Mets had a rough loss to the Twins Tuesday night but saw Pete Alonso, Michael Conforto and Brendan Nimmo all homer Jacob Degram did not have it and the Mets dropped their second straight game in a 14-8 loss to the Minnesota Twins on Tuesday at City Field. Greater than greater than box score 6 things to know about Tuesday's game. 1. Jacob Degram had the chance to break, extend a couple record tonight at City Field. The Twins had other plans. Degram was mortal tonight as he allowed six runs on eight hits, including three homers, over four innings. Mitch Garver was the man that broke his scoreless inning streak in the second with a solo homer to center. Then, after a wild pitch scored Jorge Polanco in the third, Eddie Rosario and Garver went back-to-back -to, -back to make it 5-1 to one Mets. DeGrom's MLB record consecutive starts allowing three runs or fewer was also capped at 31 straight tonight. Pete Alonso homers against Twins 0 hours 0 minutes and 17 seconds New York Mets rookie Pete Alonso becomes the fourth Mets rookie to homer in three straight games. The Mets may have been down but Pete Alonso wasn't going to give up. The rookie sent his fourth homer over the right field fence as you can see. He went deep later in the ninth as well, showing off that opposite field power. 
Brody Van Wagenen, Matthew Zaroni, Metzblog.com, Brody Van Wagenen understands that image resonates over everything, which is why extending Jacob Degram was an essential part of his vision for the future of the Mets, in a Sports Illustrated profile of Van Wagenen, the Mets GM explained that he laid out a plan to Fred and Jeff Wilpon that included locking up the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner long-term in an effort to rid a culture of negativity that seems to surround the franchise. I think that most Mets fans wake up defeated, he said. I wanted Mets fans to wake up with the belief that winning is the only outcome that they can expect. September 8, 2018, New York City, New York, USA, New York Mets third baseman Todd Frazier, 21, hits an RBI sacrifice fly against the Philadelphia Phillies during the sixth inning at City Field. Mandatory credit, Andy Marlin USA Today Sports, Andy Marlin, among the things people expected to hear on Tuesday, Todd Frazier being an option for the Mets at shortstop was probably not high on the list. But here we are. Frazier, who will play nine innings in a rehab game on Tuesday night, will spend four of those innings at shortstop, manager Mickey Calloway said before the Mets game at City Field against the Twins. According to Callaway, the Mets want to have that option of using Frazier at shortstop when he returns. And that could be soon, with the 33-year-old progressing since beginning his rehab assignment on April 2nd. He has been out since Feb. 26 due to a strained left oblique Jed Lowry, Mark Flamini, SNY, Mets manager Mickey Calloway said Tuesday that he is very encouraged by how injured infielder Jed Lowry looks, adding that, he looks great, he's moving around great. Calloway added that Lowry feels great hitting and that there is definite progress there. However, Calloway is not yet ready to give a time frame for Lowry's potential return. April 3, 2019, Miami, Florida, USA, New York Mets starting pitcher Jacob Degrom, 48, prepares to deliver pitch in the sixth inning of the game against the Miami Marlins at Marlins Park. Mandatory credit, Sam Navarro USA Today Sports, Sam Navarro, Jacob Degrom gets the ball to start a quick two-game set against the Twins at City Field on Tuesday at 7.10 p.m. On SNY, Mets notes the Mets have won seven straight games against the Twins, which goes all the way back to 2010. Degram is one of four pitches since 1893 to strike out 10 or more batters and not allow a run in each of his first two starts of the season. Pete Alonso is hitting .382 with six runs, six doubles, three homers, and 11 RBI so far this season. He hit his third homer on Sunday. Michael Conforto has homered in back-to-back -back games. Edwin Diaz has converted all four of his save attempts so far. Click here to follow via SNY Game Day how many home runs for Alonso. 0 hours 0 minutes and 54 seconds Pete Alonso has started his rookie season on a tear. He's already hit three home runs, SNY asked fans how many they thought he'd hit in 2019. Pete Alonso has started his rookie season on a tear, already hitting three home runs. SNY asked fans how many they thought he'd hit in 2019. Mickey Calloway received criticism from fans and reporters this past Saturday morning when he revealed J.D. Davis would again be hitting cleanup despite Davis entering the game with a .150 batting average. Wilson Ramos, who most critics felt should bat fourth, was pushed to hitting fifth, while Michael Conforto was dropped to batting sixth. Davis, who is said to have significant support in the front office, rewarded Callaway by hitting two solo home runs against Nationals starting pitcher Patrick Corbin, the first of which was the hardest hit home run in MLB this season, according to StatCast. New York Mets manager Mickey Calloway takes out pitcher Zach Wheeler in the fifth inning against the Washington Nationals at City Field. Wendell Cruz, USA Today Sports There are ways to explain away Zach Wheeler's disappointing start to his season, from getting fastball happy in his first outing to being a bit out of whack mechanically at home Sunday, when he walked the ballpark. Furthermore, there were just enough good innings amidst the wreckage, featuring an electric fastball and solid secondary stuff, to believe that Wheeler could right himself quickly and begin living up to the high expectations he created with his spectacular second half in 2018. 
that is an NL scout who was at City Field on Sunday said, When I asked him on Monday to evaluate Wheeler's latest start, keeping up with Brody 0 hours 5 minutes and 9 seconds Steve Delbs chats with Brody Van Wagenen about his path to becoming the GM of the Mets on Keeping Up With Brody, presented by Verizon. SNY's Steve Jobs chats with Brody Van Wagenen about his path to becoming the GM of the Mets on Keeping Up With Brody, presented by Verizon. July 16, 2015, Toronto, Ontario, Can, Cuba shortstop Yorbis Baroto, 35, is congratulated by manager Roger Machado, 61, after hitting a two-run home run in the eighth inning against Nicaragua during the 2015 Pan Am Games at Ajax Pan Am Ballpark. Mandatory credit, Tom Scherbowski USA Today Sports, Tom Scherbowski. The Donald Trump administration is seeking to overturn a Barack Obama-era deal between Major League Baseball and Cuba, the result of which would lead to it becoming harder for Cuban players to come play in the United States, according to NBC News. The decision that was made by the Obama administration said the Cuban Baseball League was not part of the Cuban government. The Trump administration is attempting to reverse the decision by saying the league and government are intertwined. In a letter to the Treasury Department, obtained by ESPN's Jeff Passan, the Trump administration writes that a payment to the Cuban Baseball Federation is a payment to the Cuban government, Craig Kimbrell or Dallas Keuchel. Zero hours, zero minutes and 24 seconds both Craig Kimbrell and Dallas Keuchel remain unsigned. SNY asked Mets fans who they'd sign to help with Mets pitching. Free agents Craig Kimbrell and Dallas Keuchel both remain unsigned. SNY asked Mets fans who they'd rather sign to help with Mets pitching. If you've followed the Mets over the past decade or so, you're familiar with an identity common to nearly every season, the team features a world-class rotation and a lineup that doesn't score enough to support it. It's a pattern best personified by that famous game in 2015, when Eric Campbell and John Mayberry Jr. comprised the middle of the lineup while both batting around .170. But the roster has felt this way at least since the front office decided to build around arms like Matt Harvey, Jacob Degram, Zach Wheeler and Noah Syndergaard. Watching these Mets through spring training and the first nine games of the regular season, you sense an unexpected inversion of that formula. The deep lineup will score runs all year, and the team's chances at contending for a championship will hinge on whether it is able to pitch enough. February 25, 2019, West Palm Beach, FL, USA, New York Mets shortstop Andres Jimenez, 72, fields a ground ball in the second inning against the Houston Astros during a spring training game at FITTAM Ballpark at the Palm Beaches. Mandatory credit, Jason Vinlove USA Today Sports, Jason Vinlove, Danny Abriano, SNY.TV, Twitter, every Monday, we'll be taking a look at how the Mets top prospects their MLB.com Mets top 10 rankings are in parenthesis, are faring. Andres Jimenez, SS, Double of Binghamton, no. 2 ETA 2020 The 20-year-old Jimenez, who is the Mets no. Two prospect by default, MLB.com has not yet removed Pete Alonso's no. One prospect status, is viewed by most minor league experts as one of the best 50 or so prospects in baseball. Jimenez has been one of the youngest players in each league he's played in during his climb to double A. He hit 0 .282, 0 .348, 0 .432 with 28 stolen bases in 85 games last season for high A Street. Lucy before being promoted to Double A, where he has opened this season with just one hit in 14 at bats spanning three games. Zach Wheeler wild in 12 to 9 loss, 0 hours, 0 minutes and 44 seconds. Zach Wheeler walked 7 and 4 in two thirds innings. His outing was left a lot to be desired, but for manager Mickey Callaway, it should be an easy fix. Zach Wheeler would like to move on from Sunday's start as soon as possible, but first, the righty assessed his performance during the Mets' 12-9 loss to the Nationals in rather harsh terms, I was just off a little, mechanically, he said after the game. But that doesn't mean I got to go out there and do what I did. 
it was just an embarrassing day for me and one of those that you just want to forget and look forward to the next start. Brandon Nimmo's start to 2019 has one of the happiest players in baseball feeling a little down. The Mets outfielder entered Sunday's game, an eventual 12-9 defeat for New York, 2 for 26 with 17 strikeouts over the first eight games of the season. The slumping Nimmo was held out of the starting lineup against Max Scherzer and the Nationals, but manager Mickey Calloway inserted the 26-year-old as a pinch hitter as part of a double switch in the fifth inning. Nimmo flew out to center in the bottom half of that frame, but faced Scherzer again in the seventh. He worked a 2-0 count before lining a double to right field that played it Luis Guillaume, December 5, 2017, New York, New York, USA, 2017 Sports Illustrated Hope Award recipient and World Series champion with the Houston Astros, Carlos Beltran at Barclays Center. Mandatory credit Wendell Cruz USA Today Sports Wendell Cruz, one of the most successful players in recent Mets history, Carlos Beltran, kept a close eye on the Mets' busy offseason that included several moves to bolster the bullpen and establish depth on the roster. And Beltran likes how the moves have translated onto the field in the young season, they're doing great. they're putting a good team together, Beltran told Fox 58, Wolf TV on Sunday. I think that, Robinson Cano, playing second base, Edwin Diaz, as the closer, bringing, Juris Familia, back, signing, Jacob Degram, they have a good, solid ball club, Mets lose 12-9 to to Nets, 0 hours 1 minute and 28 seconds the Mets were once down 12-1 to in the series finale against the Nets. They climbed their way back to 12-9, to but that's as close as they got. Mets pitchers combined to walk 12 batters as they dug the team into a 12-1 hole. New York's offense erupted after that, helped by a terrible Nationals bullpen, but the late explosion fell short as the Mets lost 12-9, on Sunday afternoon at City Field in the finale of their three-game series. Greater than, greater than box score 7 things to know about Sunday's Game 1, Zach Wheeler was shaky from the start of the game, and while he escaped the first inning unscathed, the Nationals dropped a 5 spot on him in the second inning with Wheeler unable to locate at all. That inning was especially ugly, with Wheeler walking a pair of batters, allowing a ground ball RBI single to Max Scherzer, and left fielder Jeff McNeil playing what would have been a sacrifice fly and the second out into a ground rule double by Adam Eaton that made it 4-0 Nats. October 16, 2018, Houston, Texas, USA, Houston Astros starting pitcher Dallas Keuchel, 60, delivers a pitch in the first inning against the Boston Red Sox in Game 3 of the 2018 ALCS Playoff Baseball Series at Minute Maid Park. Mandatory credit, Troy Tormina USA Today Sports, Troy Tormina. The Mets have remained in continued contact with free agent starting pitcher Dallas Keuchel, SNY's Andy Martino reported on Wednesday, adding that the situation is worth watching, now, we might know what it would cost for the Mets, or another interested team, to land Keuchel. Keuchel, 31, is reportedly seeking a one-year deal that will pay him more than the one-year, $17.9 million qualifying offer from the Astros he turned down during the offseason or a long-term contract, at a lower salary, according to Ken Rosenthal of Fox Sports. Rosenthal notes, though, that it's possible Keuchel, who he says is throwing 95-pitch simulated games every five days to get ready, doesn't get either of those requests. April 6, 2019, Phoenix, Arizona, USA, Arizona Diamondbacks third baseman Wilmer Flores, 41, bats against the Boston Red Sox during the third inning at Chase Field. Mandatory credit, Joe Camperiel USA Today Sports, Joe Camperiel. The Mets have reshaped their roster over the last year and change, saying goodbye to some familiar faces, some beloved, some not, in the process. Every week, we'll take a look at how some of those former Mets are performing with their new teams. Wilmer Flores, Diamondbacks Most Mets fans miss Wilmer, who the team non-tendered this offseason. So far for the Diamondbacks.